There are three major indicators for a coming recession. All three just turned negative, or I guess you could say just turned positive. Flashing red lights that we are headed toward a recession. It is predicted that this will be in late 2022 or sometime in 2023. But sometime in the next year to year and a half, it is felt that based on these three indicators, and I'll go through the detail on these and show you why they indicate a coming recession based on historical patterns. I first want to play a clip by uh, where da David Weston from Bloomberg is interviewing uh, Bill Dudley, the uh, former president of the New York Federal Reserve. Take a listen. Can we avoid a recession and get inflation under control? Uh, it's theoretically possible, but history is not very kind. Uh, Chairman Powell cited three episodes where the Fed tightened and we had a soft landing, 1965, uh, 1984, and, and 1994, 95. Uh, the problem is none of those uh, episodes are really uh, relevant to the current situation because in all those episodes, the Fed tightened, but not enough to slow down uh, the keep the unemployment rate from declining. In all three of those cases, the unemployment rate kept falling. And we can't afford to let the unemployment rate continue to fall in the current environment because all that would do is push inflation even higher. So the chances of, of, of generating a soft landing, uh, it seems very remote uh, because the economy, if you, try, if you start to push up the unemployment rate, uh, it's very hard to control that process. Uh, there's a, a, a rule called the SOM rule, which basically says every time the unemployment rate goes up by more than a half a percentage point, uh, the next stop is a full-blown recession. And a full-blown recession is not a rise of a half a percent or one percent in the unemployment rate. The smallest rise in the unemployment rate we've seen in the post-World War II period is over two percentage points. So I think it's going to be very difficult for the Fed to pull this off. So Obviously, they should try to pull it off, but it's going to be very difficult for them to pull it off. Bill, you said it's theoretically possible. It's going to be hard, given history, given what we've seen with past track record. Is it within the power of the Fed? Can they be smarter, or is this matter mainly a matter of luck, having certain other factors trigger, for example, uh, a big infusion of labor into the workforce? Well, I think the problem is that they waited too long to begin this, the tightening process. So they're just beginning to start to tighten at a time that inflation is way above their target and the unemployment rate is low at 3.8%. And Paul has characterized the labor market as extremely tight. In that situation, if you're going to try to get inflation under control, you're going to have to push up the unemployment rate. And if you push up the unemployment rate, it's almost impossible to avoid a recession at that point. So they'll try to stretch this out as long as they can. They'll try to push down inflation without pushing up the unemployment rate very much. But I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be very difficult for them to pull this off. History is not kind in this in this situation. Bill, Bill Dudley, again, you have to read between the lines. Think about what he's really saying here. He is saying that a recession a crash of the economy is inevitable. It cannot be avoided based on all of the indicators that he is looking at. Now that he is a former Federal Reserve president, he is more free to say things like this than one who sits on the board or who is the president of a local Fed. Larry Summers, economics professor at Harvard, former Treasury Secretary, said recession in the next couple of years is clearly more likely than not. There is not a guarantee that we're going to go into a recession. All we can do is look at the indicators that have been accurate for the last 50 years, for the last seven recessions, and say if all of these were present before every recession, that is a very strong indication that in the coming months or in the next year or so, we are headed into a recession. The three indicators are these. One is the inverted bond yields, sometimes called the inverted bond yield curve. I'll explain that. The Larry Summers 4% rule, I'll explain that, and the SOM indicator. Let's start with the inverted bond yields. 
This is a chart from the Federal Reserve that shows a period of time going back to 1975 to present. There are seven arrows here, including the last one, which is the current period, but we don't know yet that that's going into recession. It's just, I put it on here just so you could see all seven. There is another one which would actually make eight. If we could back up this chart five more years, we would see the recession of 73, 74, and the indicator that occurred right before that. Same pattern. They're all indicating in six to 24 months following the period of time where the yield, the dividend on the 10-year bond drops below the yield, the dividend on the two-year bond. The normal pattern is that the yield on the 10-year bond pays a higher premium and the two-year pays less. But when those become out of balance and the 10-year becomes less than the two-year, it signals whatever's going on that's causing that, it signals that a recession is coming. Larry Summers introduced this uh, as a methodology that he says goes back through all of financial history, through all of financial history, when the inflation rate is above 4% and the unemployment rate is below 4%, one above, one below, that that signals a coming inflation. He says it is 100% accurate. This chart shows that the current unemployment rate is 3.6% at the far right of the chart. And we know that the rate of inflation, reported rate of inflation is 8.5 or the real rate of inflation when everything is added back in is 13 to 16%. Whatever number you want to use, they're all well above 4%. So the inflation number is easily achieved and the unemployment number just triggered below 4%. This indicates, according to Larry Summers, professor at economics at Harvard, that a recession is coming and coming fairly soon, meaning sometime this year and certainly by next year. The final uh, rule is the SOM indicator rule. And this is a, not, it's not commonly talked about, but it says this, whenever the Federal Reserve raises interest rates a full one half of 1%, one half of 1% that a recession follows. Normally, the Federal Reserve raises rates a quarter of a percent and that they ease into raising rates and they ease out of lowering rates. And But when there's a one half of a percent increase, it says that there is trouble and they're trying to push down inflation, which typically uh, has sent the economy into a recession. So three, ind three indicators, inverted bond yield, the Larry Summers 4% rule, and the SOM recession indicator. So what does a recession mean to you? Stocks and bonds decline. They've typically declined a lot. And if you're in a traditional buy and hold portfolio, stocks and bonds, you know if you look at your brokerage account, your IRA, your 401k, you know that they are down quite a bit. And they, if a, if a recession occurs, as is being predicted, they will decline even more. The antidote to that is to be in some kind of an actively managed strategy so that asset classes can be changed. Traditional financial advisors don't believe in that, which is why people who use the traditional approach, find themselves in portfolios that historically have just collapsed and collapsed and collapsed. They just go down and down and down and the financial advisors say things like, you can't sell now, we didn't see this coming, you have to invest for the long run, etc." Those are, to me, sound like 
cheap sound bites. But that's, um, you've got to decide how you want to deal with that. Uh, real estate values decline during recessions. Sometimes real estate is a local, uh, a function of the local market or the local economy. And some areas do much better than others. And sometimes um, some areas, depending on the, what drives that local economy, sometimes they do worse than others. So, uh, but real estate will change from being in high demand to uh, some kind of a decline. And there are job losses. We've seen this before during uh, recessions, uh, particularly deep recessions. Uh, they're just, uh, companies can't afford people, so they lay them off and then that spirals and there become more and more job losses. This uh, shows the um, picture of when a recession hits, all of a sudden, there is panic. And I think it speaks for itself. So that's the background on inflation. I want to thank you for watching. I have, or excuse me, on recession. I have two other videos. One is on inflation itself, a little deeper uh, dive into inflation, and the other is on the direction of the stock market. So thank you for watching.